The Avro Avian was a light aircraft developed during the 1920s, and despite only achieving moderate commercial success, it still left its mark on the fields of competitive flying and aviation record setting. Following the First World War, the market for civil aircraft began to grow at a rapid pace. In Britain, this was spurred on by the shrinking of the class gap and the general consensus that enjoying aircraft shouldn't be restricted to people with wealth or mechanical obsessions. As a result of this, the LIM light aircraft trials were held to encourage the development of light aircraft for private ownership. This event was held three times, in 1923, 1924, and in 1926, and it was in this final event that the Avian would make its appearance. The first prototype Avian was developed from a modified autogyro fuselage. In 1926, the Air Ministry had placed a new contract for autogyros with Avro, which were to be designated as the Avro 576. Not long after construction began, one of these new aircraft were set aside to be modified for the two-seat light aeroplane trials at Limb, and it was redesigned as the Avro 581 Avian. The prototype was completed and given the registration GEBOV. It had a remarkably low structural weight, which gave a tear weight to all-up weight ratio of less than 0.5. The aircraft trials had strict weight allowances, with a maximum engine weight of only 170 pounds, and as a result of this, the 70 horsepower Jenner engine from the Avro 576 was retained, as it was the most powerful engine in this weight class. For competitive purposes, the Avian had a large wing area for its size, and the wing structure itself was built as simple as possible in order to save weight. The outer sections were mounted on two pairs of wing struts, and the centre section was mounted on four smaller struts attached to the fuselage. Ailerons were only fitted to the lower wing, and fuel was stored in the front of the fuselage to leave the upper main plane clear. To comply with the rules of the light aircraft competition, the wings folded around the rear spar, and this was accomplished with quick release bolts. The Avian was flown in the LIM trials by Australian pilot Herbert J. Hinkler, and overall it did pretty well. Hinkler flew 1,074 miles over three days, and despite a leaking fuel tank, he gained second place in three of the six tests. He averaged just under 69 miles an hour for the 312-mile three-lap cross-country to Shoreham on September the 12th, on the 14th, he averaged 69 miles an hour for three laps of the 366 mile Hastings circuit, and on the 14th, he averaged 78 miles an hour over a 396 mile six lap race. The Avian was proving to have excellent endurance for such a light airframe, however, its luck ran out when the drive of its magneto sheared and the aircraft was eliminated from the remainder of the competition. This blow was somewhat lessened when Hinkler won a separate race later on on the 18th of September, which covered six laps of the limb course, and he averaged 90 miles an hour. After this, the Avian was taken back to Avro's works in Hamble for modifications. The wingspan was reduced to 28 feet, and the nose was lengthened to accommodate an 85 horsepower ADC Cirrus 2 inline engine. This engine was gravity fed from a large centre section tank, whose weight necessitated the addition of two more sloping struts between the upper wing and the fuselage. A new triangle of fin and an enlarged rudder were fitted to compensate the increased side area of the lengthened nose, and it was in this guise that the Avian was redesignated as the Avro 581A. After these modifications were complete, Hinkler, who liked the Avian, bought the prototype and competed in several races over the course of 1927. At the same time as this, Avro began work on the production version of the Avian, but Hinkler continued to score impressive achievements with their first prototype. He had his sights set on long-distance flights, and over the summer of 1927, Hinkler made various modifications to the aircraft. These included a new undercarriage of his own design, lowering the engine to make it more accessible for maintenance, and adding a long-range fuel tank. As long-distance flights carried the risk of possible emergency landings in fields, bogs, and other places not well suited to aircraft, Hinkler widened the undercarriage when he redesigned it. He also designed it to be able to be moved further back, which allowed the tail to be lifted more easily when the wings were folded for transport. 
Hinkler made his first record-setting flight on the 27th of August 1927, flying 1,200 miles from England to Latvia in approximately 10 hours and 45 minutes. This was the longest non-stop flight by a light aircraft at the time, and when it was inspected, the avian impressed the Latvian Air Force, who then placed orders for the avian as a training aircraft. After this flight, Hinkler embarked on a far more ambitious endeavour. The avia's fuel consumption during the England-Latvia flight convinced him that it was capable of flying him all the way from England to his homeland of Australia. As this was a considerably longer distance than anything so far attempted with the avian, he decided to further modify it. A more rugged, non-folding divided undercarriage was added, the wings from another avian, one that had set altitude records, were fitted to the aircraft, and the wooden propeller was replaced by a metal one built by Ferry. In this new configuration, Hinkler's avian was redesignated again to the Avro 581E. He took off from Croydon on the 7th of February 1928, with Darwin as his intended destination. At the beginning of his flight, there was little media attention, perhaps because many thought that such a light aircraft lacked the endurance for such an attempt. But by the time he was halfway to his destination, his attempt had caught the attention of the aviation world. On the 22nd of February, he safely arrived at Darwin, completing the first solo flight from England to Australia, and for his exploits, he would eventually be made an honorary RAAF squadron leader. The production models of the Avian were known as the Avro 594. They had limited success in competitive events, and only moderate commercial success when compared to the de Havilland Moth. However, like the prototype, some of these Avians would go on to set some records. An Avian Mark II, flown by Dudley Watt, won an altitude race in 1927, reaching 12,750 feet in 90 minutes. The prototype model of the Avian Mark III, nicknamed the Red Rose, was flown by Captain Bill Lancaster from England to Australia. He actually began his flight before Hinkler, taking off on the 14th of October 1927, however he was plagued by various mechanical problems and did not arrive in Darwin until March the following year. His avian performed better after this, and set a new record for crossing the Bass Strait from Melbourne in just six and a half hours. A production avian Mark III was purchased by Lady Heath, who flew solo from the South African Cape to England between March and May of 1928. She then later sold her aircraft to another female pilot who was beginning to make a name for herself, Amelia Earhart. She would fly the avian on her first long-distance solo flight, becoming the first woman to fly across the North American continent and back in August of 1928. Another avian, a 616 sports model, dubbed the Southern Cross Junior, was flown by Guy Menzies on the first solo flight from Australia to New Zealand in 1931. This same aircraft would later be used by Bill Lancaster on his ill-fated attempt to beat the English to South Africa speed record. Its wreckage was eventually discovered in 1962 and is now on display at the Queensland Museum. Along with being a record setter, the Avian also had a moment of heroism. On the 1st of January 1929, Canadians Wilfred May and Vic Horner flew an avian from Edmonton to Fort Vermilion to deliver much-needed diphtheria medicine. Including the return journey, the total distance covered was over 700 miles, which was a truly impressive feat considering the appalling temperature and flying conditions at the time. The flight became known as the Race Against Death. A title shared by the exploits of a dog sled team, who, in 1925, also had to deliver diphtheria medication to a remote region in appalling conditions during the middle of the Canadian winter. There was a bit of a theme in the 1920s there. Only two pre-production models, dubbed the Avian Mark I, were built. They closely resembled the original prototype, with the exception of having slightly rounded wingtips and a triangular rudder. Things quickly moved on to the Avian Mark II, which had a 85 horsepower Cirrus engine, and subsequent models after that would eventually move on to the 95 horsepower Cirrus III. The production run of the Avian was somewhat chaotic, as internal arguments that would put Parliament to shame resulted in multiple design changes. Some Mark IIs were fitted with the Armstrong Siddeley Genet radial engine, as was a single Avian Mark III and these would be known as the Avro 594B. 
two Avian Mark III's were also converted to float planes, and these would be known as the Avro 605. The Avian Mark IV came in a variety of shapes, sizes and flavours for aviation enthusiasts to choose from, along with several improvements. These included a more robust undercarriage support structure and new horn-balanced ailerons. This aircraft was also powered by the Cirrus 3 engine, and it had a production run of 90 units. Of these, only a handful were sold in the British market, with the bulk being sold overseas to Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Mexico, Norway, South Africa, and Spain. The Avian Mark IV-M, known as the Avro 616, could really be considered its own aircraft. Its fuselage had welded steel tube framing in place of wood, and the Cirrus engine was replaced with either Hermes or Janet Major engines depending on the specific airframe. A large quantity of these were exported to Canada, who also built 18 specifically for the Royal Canadian Air Force as training aircraft, and an equally large amount of the Hermes models were also sold to China. Many were used in flying schools, but some were also used as light mail carriers in the early 1930s. However, by this point, the avian's age was starting to show, and it became apparent that it was nearing the end of its development life. An attempt was made to improve its chances on the competitive scene by building two avian Mark IVs as low-wing monoplanes. These were known as the Avro 625. Neither of these saw much success in races, and the first model was eventually rebuilt as a standard biplane. The last avians were built in 1933, and only a handful saw military service in World War II. Ten wooden and four metal frame avians were impressed by the RAF at the start of the war, and they were used solely as training aircraft. Several surviving avians can be found today. Despite having logged over 35,000 flying miles, the first prototype avian flown by Hinkler was in remarkably good condition, however it was never registered in Australia. Instead, it was placed in the Brisbane Museum, which then became the Queensland Museum, with its original markings. And it's still there today, and I snapped this photo during a recent visit. Two airworthy avians can also be found in Australia, and several other models are on display in the US, Canada, Britain, and Sweden. Though it was only a moderately successful light aircraft, the avian certainly had an interesting life, and one that is often overshadowed by the more popular de Havilland Moth. So I hope you enjoyed today's video on this little plane, and I'll catch you all next time.